Let's take a look at the completable future. In Java, we recently talked about the Java future. So it does make sense to also talk about the completable future. In short, this is a way to distribute tasks to CPU cores and bring their results together into one place. In just an instance, we will also build examples to provide clarity. Let's start by covering a couple of basics. A completable future is a versatile and powerful tool that enables you to work asynchronously in a non-blocking manner. It represents a future result of an asynchronous computation, allowing you to perform actions when the result becomes available or handle potential exceptions. So there are some key features and benefits. Let's talk about them. The completable future allows you to execute tasks asynchronously, freeing up the main thread for other work while the asynchronous task is in progress. This is particularly useful for I.O. bound operations like network requests or file system access, but can of course be used for any type of task that you can think of. All right, so by using the completable future, you can avoid blocking the main thread, improving overall application responsiveness and scalability. The completable future leverages functional programming concepts like chaining, combining and composing asynchronous operations, making your code more concise and expressive. You can gracefully handle exceptions that may occur during asynchronous computations using methods like exceptionally. An example for that in just a moment. So there's also another task in this universe called future. What is the advantage of completable future over future? Let's take a look. The completable future offers several advantages over the traditional future class in Java. When it comes to composition, the completable future provides a rich set of methods for composing asynchronous computations, such as then apply, then compose, then combine, and all of. This allows you to create complex asynchronous workflows more easily. Regarding exception handling, completable future offers better handling mechanisms, including exceptionally and handle, which make it easier to manage errors in asynchronous operations. As for cancellation, Completable Future provides methods for cancelling asynchronous operations, which can be useful in certain scenarios. Speaking generally, Completable Future's API is more functional in nature, which can make it easier to write concise and expressive asynchronous code. In summary, Completable Future is a more powerful and flexible tool for asynchronous programming compared to the traditional Future class. Nicely said, right? Alright, I think we said enough about the basics and the theoretical parts. Aren't you already impatiently waiting for an applied example? I know, the speed of describing some topics in this video may be a bit fast. In part, this is to squeeze as much information in this short video as possible. Especially when it comes to the code segment, some might want to see a certain explanation again. So feel free to jump to that certain section again. Also, the entire code is uploaded onto GitHub. This is actually one thing that I do in all my videos. This way, you can check the code at your own pace and compare whatever is presented in the video. All right, let's dive into the code example. All right, let's again start with a Maven project in which we also have two build scripts and two run scripts. Now, depending on your operating system, if you're using Windows, you're going to use the CMD files. And if you're going to use Mac or Linux, you're going to use the shell scripts. Let's start by creating a new class combination example, which also implements the runnable interface. This in turn brings us to implement the run method. The first thing we want to do is announce what we are doing. Example with two completable futures that are combined. So let's create a new variable future one of type completable future, which takes strings. This variable gets its instance by the supply async method of the completable future. This in turn takes an anonymous method, which will do none other than just return the string hello. Let's create another variable future two of the same type completable future taking strings. Just like the first variable, this also uses the supply async method and in an anonymous method, it returns my friend. Now let's create another variable future combined of type completable future taking strings. But this time we use the method then combine to combine the two other completable futures. Here we use the then combine method of the future one variable and provide the future two variable within an anonymous method naming the s1 and s2 variables which correspond to the string results of future one and future two. We create ourselves a new string consisting of s1 then a blank and then s2 and return that as a result for the future combined variable and making use of the then except we print it to the terminal. All right, let's put it all together in the main method, creating a new instance of the combination example 
and running it. Let's build and run the application. And here we can see the result. Hello, my friend. All right, time to create another example. Let's call the new class combination async example, also implementing the runnable interface, which brings us to implement the run method. Let's announce what we are doing. Example with two futures with combined results. Now let's create a first variable future one of type completable future handling integer. And let's again make use of the supply async method, providing an anonymous method in which we sleep 1000 milliseconds. After having done that, we return 10. Because the sleep method can be interrupted, let's also put it into a try catch context in order to catch the interrupted exception. And if that happens, we throw a new runtime exception and provide the interrupted exception as a parameter. Let's create another variable future2 of type completable future, also handling integers. Here we also make use of the supply async method, providing an anonymous method in which we also sleep, this time 2000 milliseconds. And after having done that, we return 20. Obviously, this also needs to be put into a known try catch context, throwing runtime exception. All right, now let's create a new variable, future results of type completable future handling integers. And then we use the then combine async method of the future one variable, in which we also provide the future two variable, and their results are accessed by the x and y variables, which we then just both add. All right, now that this has been started, we can do something. Let's simulate this by printing a text to the terminal. This message is displayed right after starting to combine the futures. Then we make use of the get method to get the result of the future result variable and put it into an integer variable, which we name result. As this can raise interrupted exceptions or execution exceptions, we also need to catch it. And once the get method has returned the value and put it into the result variable, we print it to the terminal using the print line method, printing result and then the result which should output 30. And in the case that an exception was raised, we print the text combined future error message and then the exception message. All right, after having done all that, we print another message. This message is displayed after having waited for the combining futures. Okay, let's get back to the main method and put it all together. Let's create a new instance of the combination async example and then run it. Let's build and run the application. And here we can see that we first printed the text. This message is displayed right after starting to combine the futures. Then we print the result 30. And then we print the message. This message is displayed after having waited for the combining futures. All right, let's continue with another example. This time let's create a class throw error example. Again, implementing the run rule, which brings us to implement the run method. Let's announce what we are doing. Example with one future that throws an error. And then we create a new variable future of type completable future, take in integers and make use of the supply async method, providing an anonymous method. Here we throw a runtime exception with the text some error message. Now we make use of the exceptionally method of the completable future with X having the instance of the exception, which will print to the terminal right away. Exception and then the exception message. After having done that, we return zero. All right, let's put it together in the main method, creating a new instance of throw error example and running it. Let's build and run the application. And here we can see that the exception was thrown. Java lang runtime exception and then our custom message, some error message. All right, let's build another example. For that, we're going to create a class future list example, implementing the runnable interface and therefore the run method. Let's announce what we are doing. Example of a list of futures that run through another future. Now the first thing we want to do is create a list of completable futures that all take strings. We're going to call the variable for that futures and make use of the arrays as list method. Now let's add a first completable future using the supply async method in which we just return future A result. Let's repeat that returning future B result. And let's repeat that again returning future C result. All right, now let's put them all together with the all of method. The result is then put into the combined future variable, which we then put in the then run, in which we provide an anonymous method, in which we make use of the for each method for all the futures. And then every single future is accessed in the future variable, which provides us with the example using the get method, so that we can print the text to the terminal, combine future, and then the text. And as the get method may raise an execution exception or an interrupted exception, we catch that in a try catch context, and in case that happens, print the error, combine future error, message, and then the exception message. Let's put it all together in the main method, creating an instance of the future list example and running it. Let's build and run the application. 
And there we can see our list of three completable futures, having been put together and printed to the terminal. Combined future, future A result, B result and C result. Alright, to sum up, we first covered the basics of the completable future and also compared it to the future. If you want to know more about the Java future, I've got a full video about this as well. Just check the playlist Java Basics on my channel and you'll see. Okay, we then moved on to a code example, covering the combination example, an asynchronous combination example, an error throwing example and a future list example. That's it for the completable future. Is everything now clearer to you? Was this video of value to you? Drop a like to this video and also consider subscribing to this channel. This is the best way to get notified about videos with content like this in the future. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Gene. See you in the next video.